Some of the things I'm about to show you will surprise even the most experienced of RuneScape players. Easter eggs and fun facts about the game that will make you love it more than you already do. And I promise most, if not all of you, have never seen this stuff before. These are absolutely wild and honestly will end up leaving you with more questions than answers. So. Buckle yourself in. In the far eastern section of the Lumberge Swamp Cave, you can find four cave goblins. The first time you try talking to them, they'll think that you're trying to hurt them. By telling them you're not, you're then able to have a normal conversation. Now, these cave goblins can offer some pretty cool things. If they see that you don't have a light source, they will offer you a lit torch. And if you continue to talk to them, there's even a roughly 15% chance that you'll be given a tinder box as well. All of this seems pretty harmless, right? Well, let's think about this. I'm able to have a normal conversation conversation with them without having a light source on me because I have the fire of eternal light in the Lumbridge Caves. This eternal fire means that I no longer need a light source in the caves because it stays permanently lit. But what if I don't have this fire lit and I don't have a light source? Well, after 20 seconds, tiny little insects will begin hitting your character every single tick for one damage. This consistent damage means that any conversation you have with an NPC will get interrupted almost immediately. This means that the initial conversation you need to have with those cave goblins telling them that you aren't there to harm them would be impossible to have since the conversation goes on for longer than a tick. Which means it would be impossible for you to ever even get offered a lit torch since they think you're there to harm them. Okay, so let's just go right next to them then and drop our light source and quickly talk to them before the insects get us, right? Easy. Well, you can't. The game does not let you extinguish or drop your light source that you have on you. The only way for you to get offered a lit torch from these cave goblins is to have previously spoken to them and then somehow end up in the lumbered swamp caves without a light source. This is just such an unlikely scenario and until recently may have been one of the least seen bits of dialogue in the entire game. These guys have been down here since 2005, 18 years. The only reason we really know about it now is because of the eternal light which was added to the game in 2018. Think about it. Before the eternal light was added, those cave goblins were down there willing to offer free torches and tinder boxes to anyone who really needed them. You just needed to be in one of the most remote parts of the cave without a light source, which is already unlikely since you can't drop or extinguish the one that you already have on you when you're in the cave. I don't get it. There's two ways we can do this though. Assuming you've already spoken to the goblins, you could enter the Lumbered Swamp Cave and run the entire length of the cave to the goblins and claim your torch. You just have to survive the multiple wall beasts and the constant barrage of ones that the insects in here attack you with. But you will eventually make it and are able to claim the torch. But is it possible to have never spoken to the goblins and still get a torch? The only possible way I can think of is if you are in a certain section of the cave. This part right here. This section and this northwestern section are areas of the cave that are subject to gas explosions. If you have an unprotected lit fire source like a candle or a torch, standing in this section for too long will cause your light source to explode and go out. Everyone's experienced this once before in their RuneScape career. So if we stand on this tile and let our light source go out, we're then able to drop it on the ground since the game no longer sees it as a light source. You then have to sprint your way through the dark cave with no minimap and talk to the closest possible cave goblin. You have to hope that you can get through that initial conversation claiming to not want to hurt them before the cave insects start hitting you for those consistent hits of one damage. If you manage to do that, you can then talk to the goblin again until you're able to get the torch. And that is the story of one of the strangest interactions that you can have with an NPC in the game. A series of events so unlikely to happen just for you to get offered this lit torch. These guys have some other interesting things as well, but we'll get to that soon. Here's another fun fact that I think everyone should know about. Using my link below, you can get 50% off your first box of Factor Meals fresh, ready-made meals that are delivered straight to your doorstep. The meals are never frozen and designed by dietitians to ensure that every meal is full of delicious, nutritional quality. Factor offers what I like to call healthy convenience. These meals save you time on meal prep, washing dishes, and buying groceries, and it's the best replacement possible for unhealthy fast food. Factor's chef-prepared meals take the guesswork out of eating well. The no-hassle prepared foods, shakes, or smoothies are ready in just two minutes with no prep or cleanup necessary. And for us RuneScape nerds, Nerds, it is vital time to gain XP, so it makes sense. They even have options for those following a keto, low calorie, vegan, or vegetarian lifestyle. With consistently updated menus, you'll never get tired of 
what they have to offer. Use my link below or go to go.factor75.com and use code POGSOUPMRA50 for 50% off your first box. Once you click, my description will live update to count up all the purchases. Ready-made meals are something that everyone should try, and with a 50% off offering from Factor, now is definitely the time. A couple more things about the goblins. They were the first ever cave goblins added to the cave, two months before the Lost Tribe quest was released into the game, which is the quest that introduces Dorgish and goblins to us. These guys actually have specific dialogue options, which depends solely on the brightness of your light source, and if you're mean, you can threaten to hurt them, which will cause all four of the goblins in the cave to panic and run away. I love these guys. Staying on the topic of goblins, you can find eight cave goblin miners just outside of Dorgish Khan in the Dorgishan Mines. You can talk to these goblins and just ask them general questions about their mining jobs. All of the goblins you talk to here have the exact same chat head model, except for one of them, this goblin right here. Now, as you can see, when we talk to him normally, the chat head model that shows is just like the others, but Watch this. By talking to him and then not continuing the conversation, after about a minute of waiting, he will go back to mining, but our conversation is still on screen. Now, when we click to continue and ask him a question, his old chat head model appears. The original one that was used between 2005 and 2007. This is, I believe, the only way to see this old chat head model in game, and one of the few, if only, ways to get access to an old chat head model that was changed before 2007. It's crazy that this was even discovered. For you to find out about this, you needed to have started a conversation with this specific cave goblin while he's mining, go AFK or go do something else for a while until he goes back to mining, then continue the conversation with him. There isn't even a reason to talk to these goblins in the first place, so again, a lot of things had to go right for this to be discovered. Shout out to Cook from the OSR's wiki team for finding out about this. I mentioned earlier that the four cave goblins in the Lumbridge Swamp can be pushed back by threatening to hurt them. There's one other NPC in the game who will also retreat when you threaten to hurt them, and that's Hans in Lumbridge, the guy who's always roaming around the castle. He was actually the first ever non-player character, aka an NPC, added to the game, all the way back in 2001. He has a unique mechanic where you're able to scare him away from the spot he's currently standing in. By selecting the talk to option, then I have come to kill everyone in the castle option, he will run away from you, and not just by a few tiles. If he's got an open path, he can pretty much run all the way out of your vision. This means that you can force Hans away from the one place in the game he was meant to be. Lumbridge Castle. There's two places you can force him out of the castle, the entrance on the eastern side and the single door on the western side. It would be absolutely hilarious if you could force Hans all around the game, but he unfortunately has a limit. He's unable to go any farther than the ham hideout on the western side of the map, and he's unable to go past the middle part of the bridge on the eastern side. Now, Hans will always try to walk back to the castle after a certain period of time after you've scared him, and this can lead to some wacky scenarios where he ends up getting stuck. If the game notices that Hans Hans is unable to move back towards the castle, he'll end up despawning and appearing back inside the castle. This happens quite frequently since the path he takes when running away from you is quite wonky. Another weird mechanic is that his path isn't exactly determined every time. After scaring him, there's about a one and a half second delay until you're able to move again. Now, depending on where you are, you can manipulate Hans to move in the direction you want. If you want him to turn right, just run to the left of him, and if you want him to turn south, just run to the north of him. It's a very strange interaction and is honestly very frustrating if you're trying to force Hans to move a certain direction since there are so many obstacles he can get stuck behind. The ultimate challenge is to scare Hans all the way back to the goblin hut east of the castle. You are unable to lure Hans across the south bridge due to his range limit, which means that you first have to scare him all the way north to the northern bridge. Go across that, then south, all while trying to avoid Hans getting stuck behind the dozens of potential obstacles. I spent way too much time trying to get him there. The closest I was able to get was getting him just outside of the hut until he got stuck stuck and despawned. It's pretty funny that when talking to him all the way over in this area, all his dialogue still makes it seem like you're inside of Lumbridge Castle. So if you're bored and want to achieve one of the most meaningless things in the game, try luring Hans all the way to the Goblin Hut. You'd be one of the very few players to have ever achieved this useless feat. We're not too far away from 300,000 subscribers. If you aren't yet subscribed, make sure you do. And if you already are, I am deeply in love with you. Here's a couple smaller fun facts about the game. The general stores in Shazen and the Void Knight Outpost actually share the same stock. If you sell one to one of them, it will be visible and buyable in the other. Pretty useful for all of you pest control and Zaya locked Ironmen. 
I am currently standing in the Piscatoris Falconry area, located in the Piscatoris region, just west of the Gnome Stronghold. In this building, Matthias' house, there is a fire. Nothing too crazy, right? Well, if you try cooking something on the fire before you've completed the Fremenic Trials, you'll get this message. Only members of the Fremenic may use this fire. Why in the world a fire that's super far away from the Relica region can only be used after completing the Fremenic Trials is very weird. The only thing I can think of is that the building was just copy and pasted from Relica. I looked at all the buildings in Relica to confirm this, but unfortunately was unable to find an exact match. Some had similar looks, but slightly different layouts compared to the one in Piscatoris. The only thing I can think of is that the building was copy and pasted to that area, but the things inside were slightly moved around to make it more unique for Matthias. The fire, however, wasn't changed to be able to be used by everyone, which is why you need to have completed the Fremenic Trials to use it. And that's a game theory. The spell NPC Contact on the Lunar Spellbook allows you to talk to various NPCs around the game without needing to speak to them directly. These conversations can be useful for things like getting a Slayer task or asking Watson what clue scrolls you've already given him. When you try to use the spell next to one of the NPCs on the NPC contact list, the NPC tells you to get out of their head and speak to them normally since you're right next to them. There is a weird case though with one of the NPCs where this doesn't happen. You can stand next to Bert the Sandman in Yanil and he won't tell you that you're too close, even though you're right next to him. In order for him to tell you you're too close, you have to run south to the Yanil bar and NPC contact him in there, even though you're 30 tiles south of him and he can't see you. Another one of those strange interactions. A huge thank you to Cook and the OSR's wiki team for finding a lot of these little fun facts and letting me show them off in a video. The OSR's wiki team is by far the best wiki out there and deserve all the support they get. Consider turning Adblock off on the wiki or supporting their Patreon to help them with some much needed and much deserved funding to keep running the site. Back in 2001, when the game first came out, these were the list of runes that were going to come into the game. Many of these are ones that you still recognize to this day, but three of them never actually made it into the game. The Illusion Rune, Time Rune, and Reality Rune. These unfortunately never made it into the live version of the game and were thus never obtainable. Time, Illusion, and Reality Runes seem like the exact runes that were used when making the movie Inception, so I'm beginning to think that Christopher Nolan is actually a RuneScape player. You may have noticed one other rune on the list that isn't obtainable these days either, and that's the Life Rune. This one actually had an image on the rune itself, which looks like it was just the sun. Life Runes were originally planned to be used for summoning spells, but were later shelved. Three spells were found in the data files of the game that had you using Life Runes. Call Animal, Raise Skeleton, and Summon Demon. If you take a normal cat or hellcat down in the crypts of Barrows and ask it to chase a crypt rat, your cat will tell you that you're having a laugh and he's not going to get himself killed for you. You call him a chicken and he says, no stupid, I'm a cat. End of conversation. But if you bring a wily cat or wily hellcat with you after completing the rat catcher's quest and you ask it to catch a rat, some very unique dialogue appears. He says that he doesn't want to chase the rat. You call him a scaredy cat and then he begins to threaten you if you don't stop being mean to him. You keep calling him cowardly and the word custard is in there too until eventually your cat snaps and he attacks you for three damage. That's right, your own cat can deal three damage to you. Hardcore Iron Man beware. Entrana has always been known as the island where players are prohibited from bringing weapons and armor with them. Any attempt to get on the island with some is impossible. Even treasure trail caskets don't roll weapons and armor on the island, which makes it useful if you're going for god pages. Players have always been crafty though, and have found ways around these restrictions. Fletching and crafting are especially useful since you can make things like a battle staff from some Celastris bark or a bow with an unstrung version of the bow and some bowstring. This lets you smuggle weapons and armor onto the island, even though they don't have much use there. If you hop worlds though, or log out and try to log back in, a monk will appear scolding you for having a weapon and swiftly kick you off of the island. But what if you wanted a melee weapon made of metal? There's a way to get one on the island that you've been able to smuggle since RuneScape Classic 20 years ago, and that is with a Christmas cracker. If you open a Christmas cracker on another player, there's about a 1 in 23 or 6 in 128 chance that either of you will receive a black dagger. These Christmas crackers can be brought onto the island since they aren't a weapon, but the silly monks don't realize that these Christmas crackers actually have a chance to pull a weapon, the black dagger. Unfortunately, Christmas crackers are a bit pricey, and I had some bad luck trying to get this dagger. It took me over 100 tries to get it, which cost me over 9 million GP. But to show it off in this video, 
was worth it. Now I can train on these chickens in peace without worrying about anyone crashing me. I try to get out at least one Easter egg fun fact video a year, and this was one of my favorites we've ever done. The spaghetti code in Age of the Game can lead to some pretty hilarious in-game finds. I'm sure the next time I come out with one of these, even more wild fun facts will have been discovered. So if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, make sure to drop a like down below. If you have any fun in-game Easter eggs or secrets that you think fit in this type of video, make sure to leave it in the comment section below or shoot me a DM on Discord or Twitter. I'll see you all in the next one.